Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today I'm coming to you with a knife review, but just not any knife review. These are knives that are made in a country that is under attack and at war. Yes, these two beautiful knives are made in Ukraine by BPS Knives, a company that resides close to Kiev. And believe it or not, these people go to work every day even though they have air raid after air raid after air raids. They told me that they had over 20 air raids in Kiev just in the month of May. Wow. You know, I normally only do reviews for a lot of money. <laughs> Sorry for that, I have to eat too. <laughs> but no, um, just joking aside. Uh, or for knives that I sell in my store. But these ones, they sell direct and they are actually very successful. Believe it or not, they have 20 employees and they've been doing this since uh, uh, 2017 so they just didn't start you know in, in the middle of the war they started earlier than this and I have a ton of respect for a businessman that starts a business and like five years or six years later has 20 employees of course they have to, to go through very tough hardships I mean the factory right next to theirs was actually shelled and uh, shrapnel actually hit their factory too they had to really take care of like 4,000 knives that were already made that they have to like sent to Amazon into safety <laughs> and they, they did this while they were like under attack and uh, 10 of their employees are actually now fighting so they've been drafted into the army or they went there as volunteers I don't know that um, but, but still you see that these guys are so tough that even in this situation they managed to make fantastic knives and I love them because they're really, really honest. They're like, they're like knives that you would expect to come out from a country that is going through these hardships. Because these are knives made for use, for practical purposes. Great cost craftsmanship, but those are not for those that collect them or want to tinker with them. Those are hardy knives and not expensive and they're really well made. And I'm starting with the HK1, the CSH model. CSH means that this is made from carbon steel, like 1066 carbon steel. And I love carbon uh, blades because yes, they do rust, so they take a, they need a little bit of maintenance and love <laughs> and oil. <laughs> but I love it because they're just so hard. I mean, they are, they are really tough, easy to sharp, but still they hold an edge for a long, 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 long time. You know, the blade thickness is just perfect, about three millimeters, just under three millimeters, I think. And what I really love is this Scandi grind. And you can see this here, that these knives are actually, let me, let me explain the, the Scandi grind to you. Normal knives just are like a little bit V-shaped and then in the lower end, they have the real, you know, like a bevel for the, for the blade. Scandi knives are not made that way. They are like a V. So the sharpness goes all the way down to the edge, which has two advantages. First of all, they cut like fantastic. They're so sharp. Second, they're really easy to sharpen because it's so easy to hit the right angle for sharpening because you can see it. You don't have to look at the very small extra angle. But you're just looking at one flat angle and so it's really easy to sharpen even with a simple whetstone. But of course you can also use very fancy modern like just you know rotate, rotating uh, grinders. Are they sharp? Yeah, they are. Well, this is a sketch of an air gun that I want to develop. <laughs> but I have it in my mind so I can spare the paper now. So they're really, really sharp. So see what they're doing to this piece of paper. Amazingly sharp knives. And this is because of the Scandi grind. They just go through the paper like butter. This is how a, a practical knife should cut. The handle is walnut wood. Great for knife handles. It's full tang, of course it is. Lanyard hole, of course, uh, same, same here. And also it's, it's cured with Danish oil. So this won't rot. It's a very, very solid knife. The blade shape is just practical. It's just practical because it's easy to sharpen. Very, very good cutting everything. Uh, I just love this knife and I think it has so many purposes. You can use it in the kitchen. You can use it, you know, on, on a hike. You can use it for outdoor, just everything. This is just a great practical knife and I love it. The handle size is just perfect. It's not too large and the whole knife is lightweight. It's under 300 grams, I think. Why make it heavier than necessary? Because, you know, if you're out in outdoor or hiking, you want to take light equipment, but still sturdy enough to do the job. And this does the job. I mean, look at this. <laughs> but this is, this means cutting wood. See the flakes that I'm chopping off here? Yeah, I think you can fell a tree with this knife. <laughs> 
Now the sheath is really nice solid leather, well made and uh, see how thick the leather is. And what I love is the belt loop because typically a knife that you would get today would have the belt loop right here and, and you can actually use this here too. But, but, a guy like me, I like my t-shirts hanging over my jeans so that people don't see my belly so much. <laughs> but if you do that, if you do that, right, this would mean that if you carry a knife like this, either your shirt is over the uh, handle, which makes it hard to draw, or your, your t-shirt is like tucked up here looking very stupid. Now with this, it's not the case, because if you attach this to your belt, it hangs lower. And it's still very easy to draw because all you have to do is you hold it here and you pull out the knife. So I think this is actually what every knife manufacturer should do. They should give you a loop to hang the knife lower. It's very practical. You can really see that this knife is manufactured by people that are used to wearing knives every day. The second knife, I like it even more uh, because this is the HK5 model. As you see, it's a little bit larger. I like that it has finger grooves because it makes it even more comfortable to hold. Even for my like meaty paws, it's really nice. It feels so good in the hand. Same steel, 1066. Both knives I think can be had with uh, stainless blades too, for like five dollars more. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and actually um, this is uh, this is also 1066 steel, um, and it has the same thickness, also walnut, and of course also full tang. It looks a little bit more aggressive, which is probably the reason why I like it. <laughs> Scandi grind, same thing, really, really sharp. I think this, of the two knives, this is my favorite. Now, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now, the best part is, how expensive are these knives? They're, they're so cheap, so, so cheap. So they sell this knife for $31. Complete, with the sheath, with everything. $31. I mean, come on. <laughs> Made in Ukraine, under attack great quality how can you say no to a knife like this I think we should flood their websites with orders so this is how you wear the knife as you see it hangs low but it feels just fantastic because this is exactly the right uh, height for me to uh, to handle the knife my t-shirt is still over my belly which feels wonderful and it's so easy to draw the knife I love it now it is no secret that I stand with Ukraine and actually BPS knives has a model has a knife that they sell and 50% of what it costs and it's it's an inexpensive knife um, goes directly to a foundation that helps soldiers fighting right at the border right at the front and um, I, I think that um, everyone should get that knife too <laughs> because it's probably just as good as the other knives and um, and and I think that every we now need to stand with Ukraine to help them winning against the Russian forces. So what is my verdict on these knives? I think they're amazing. They're just, they are workhorses. They are so well made that they still look great in a collection. I mean, I wish they would make folders too because then I'd probably buy the whole stock. <laughs> Since, you know, I'm a big fan of folders. But, but this is just a fantastic knife and I think you should get one. <laughs> Whenever I do a review of a product that I haven't made myself, I try to always show something that I did make myself to show you guys that I'm not a complete sellout yet. <laughs> so I made myself an air gun target, a new air gun target, based on a two euro coin. Well, this two euro coin looks a little bit like it's been shot at because it has been shot at. <laughs> in, no, in any case, I'm saying that, you know, if, if like uh, a, a gun shoots a group size of a two euro coin, I like to say that is an accurate gun. So I thought, why not just using a two euro coin for this? And yeah, I know this one is, uh, you know, was minted in Spain, but that was, it was the only one I had in my wallet. So I don't hate Spain. I actually like Spain. I've been there many times. So forgive me for, uh, you know, drilling a hole through Juan Carlos' face. <laughs> that was not intentional. In, in any case, um, it's a rotation one. So when you hit it, it rotates. And there's a little magnet that kind of stops it here giving it some additional resistance so that wind like would not turn it. So, and of course, the weaker the gun, uh, the fewer times it will, it will wind. Um, I put it on a solid block so that it doesn't move. And um, this is uh, like the black from a 10 meter uh, air gun uh, target. 
and I'm putting it at the 30 meter distance, of course, since this is the slingshot channel and we don't do average stuff here. So there it is, over there. Almost not possible to see it from here, but I can zoom it in for you so that you can see it. Okay. There it is. Pretty far, right? And I'm shooting with the Germany legal five and a half foot pound, seven and a half joule FX Impact. To me, the greatest air gun on the market. 38 shots in the magazine, bullpup design, super short but super long barrel <laughs> for a compact weapon like this. And I think it, accuracy is just out of this world. And you can see it's a windy day today. Uh, so I hope that we're gonna hit the target a few times at least. Okay, here we go. Haha! It's so much more satisfying when something happens when you shoot at it. Oh, I think the outer ring from the two euro coin jumped off. Getting the hang of it. I think I licked it. It's so good, so good. I think there is a pellet sticking right in the middle of Carlos' face. Ah, I relieved him. It feels like endless, like 38 shots feels like endless. Oh, that was it. <laughs> How do, you, how do you think? How did I? I mean, I didn't hit it every time, but that was me. It wasn't the gun. The gun actually is unbelievably accurate. 30 meters for a five and a half foot pound pellet rifle is really, really good, don't you think? So, lost the outer ring here, but that doesn't mean that the target cannot be used anymore because it still has the size of a two euro coin. And I like that, how like it bing, stands to attention. <laughs> also, look at how flat the pellets get when they hit the target. And this one here, I think is rather interesting. Let me show you. Because it hit the middle of the screw and you can see the torx shape that it actually ad uh, adopted. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so I hope you like this because that's it for today. Thanks and bye bye and good luck to you guys fighting for Ukraine 
fighting for us too, fighting for our freedom against the evil attacker. <laughs>